Well, it's a bit of a strange one, guys. This could be my last overnight proper carp session on this particular lake, which is the main lake of Berry Hill Fisheries. I'm really late to the party. It's like just gone four o'clock. They had a really big match on. I think I saw one to pegs one to 49 marked. So loads of anglers there. I don't think it fished that great. About 20 something pounds, I think, was even some some weights called and the guy next to me. I'm right, obviously on the end of the match. It, not in the match. I don't have any interest in match fishing, but the guy just snapped a section of his pole, I think. So very, very expensive and not catching fish as well. Not a good ending to the day, as he said. I'm here hoping to catch a decent car as a sort of farewell sign off to what was one of the most iconic carp and mixed fishing lakes in England, no question. 12 acre lake, a natural estate lake, over 200 years old. And I've had a, I don't fish it all the time, but I've had good results here. I have had good results here, um, especially with the carp this year. So this is my last one. So I'd better crack on four o'clock it'll be dark at seven something so I'm very very late but I'm rigged up we'll probably talk through some things later on first I put a few balls of ground bait around by this bush round here which I've fished before I've fished this big before possibly if I put this film up early you guys won't have seen the other films I've made here so this is what we're going to be doing I've got Bailey's number one horse feed a few handfuls of ground bait uh, in the in the form of, of a brand that's just horse feed again but I'm gonna not crush up we're gonna leave some boilies in it and squeeze the ground bait pretty hard so they've got to work to chew it down because it's full of bream and those bream will make short work of my ground bait let's say the geese have come and visit me they've been landing and flying in now be nice in the winter if they fly off and clear off to Africa or somewhere so I've got my ground bait might want a little bit more water with it but i want it quite firm but i'm going to mix some um boilies in with it which is something i don't think i've done before it's normally maggots casters that sort of thing worms these ones are called salty squid should be taking them sea fishing really so i'm going to mix some of these in straight in with that mix i can cut part about loose and i thought why not just put them in and let them dig around and, and get them out Hopefully not too much duck doo doo. I'm kneeling in here. I don't know whether it does smell of salty squid. It's not particularly smell of anything smell this one. But I might as well use them up. They're these size. I don't know what size they are, but to me they're too small for using here. Even though it's the last time I'll probably use them on this particular lake. Because they're too small, they're going to get to bashed by the bream and you'll be up all night probably be up all night with the geese anyway oh look at this look left the lid open the ducks are going to love that let's get all these chucked in it's no good leaving it in the packet is it get it in the water that's where they work Come here, you. So I've got to mix all those in, and that smell off of these. I'll crush one open. I do smell. I don't know what salty squid is supposed to smell of, to be honest. But I need to get some out there. I've got to mix the balls of ground right out first. This is just my way of doing it. Now, if I could get what I'm looking for, is I'm not going to be greedy. If I could get one fish before midnight, one through the night. And one at dawn I'll settle for that it's just a signing off session really and in respect to this good carp lake see if they've got those boilies in there like that they're gonna have to work to dig them out a bit so I'm gonna knock a load of these up and fire them out but in three different swims one up here towards that bridge one up by the willow tree and one really close just down here because I have picked up bonus fish off there before Generally the people go long distance and I don't really do long distance, I can't be bothered with it. I just lob it out here, lob it out there, lob it out there, let the fish find the bait. Well, I'm going to whizz it out with a ground bait catapult here.
you might have noticed that I've actually sprayed them over a wide area and that's just the way I've been fishing this last year and been picking fish up doing that rather than trying to concentrate the balls in measure exactly the casting distance I want them moving around to get more confidence feeding eating this ground bait ball moving over there and then feeding on that one I think if they're moving and milling around you're more likely to get one stumble across your bait rather than just one concentrated patch so I suppose we better start putting some rods together Well, it's happened so often here, for me anyway, at uh, the main lake, or used to, because this is my last trip. It's, it's, it's night time. For me, it's just dusk, night time, dawn. I'm not even sure I've caught one. Maybe I've caught one in the daylight. Most of the time, I don't even can't fish in the day, and that's the truth of it. Really nice and quiet. No geese. I'm wondering, will they come in as a sunset, which is going around over there? It's now like... 5.45, 5.36 o'clock. So another 40 minutes before that's dropping. Absolutely idyllic setting, but my concern is I can't see any bubbling and I cannot see any waking. There's fish cruising along the top. No movement, nothing. And that match, the matchmen are very good at catching fish. I'm not saying the carp, obviously, but, you know, the catching general fish. That was a poor match. I, I heard weights of 20 pounds, they normally win it with 100. And uh, quite a few of them, when I was there, I just didn't see a fish caught. One little tiddly roach or a skimmer or something. So that's slightly on the edge, you know. I think, mm, I've, got no, I've got no choice because I'm fishing with the weather and time. And a horrific time this morning, work, nightmares, plumbers, electricians, oh my God. But that's the way it is. It's the latest I've ever started here as well. But it just takes one of these to kick off. Turn that awful start to the day around.
tell you what we'll do, I'll show you the setup I have here, because I am Mr. Scruffy. Have you seen before, all I have is an old bed chair, second hand thrown out, leg snap and repaired by me. They blow up, well blow up, it's self inflating. I thought I was going to blow that up, but you just open it, the valve, and it sort of fills with air a bit, makes it a bit softer. Then I throw the old sleeping bag over there. Then I put the pillow, lightweight, and then I put the towel. Right, you think, what's all the towel? Well, I'm not going to go washing and shaving in the lake, am I? But sometimes when it's cold, and it will be cold tonight, I don't necessarily want to have my hat on, so I put my head torch on for getting up straight away. I can just leave it on and I slack off. It's not some fancy one, it's about ten pounds. Just put new batteries in it. That's all you want. And I've got my camera floodlight, and I just relax the bands a bit with the adjuster here so I can actually sleep with that just loose on my forehead. And I've got it bang straight on. Then I just put the towel like this over my head, and that just keeps my head warm. But wait for this. I just put it round my ears, but leave my ears on my head. <laughs> I leave my ears clear so that I can hear the buzzer go off, if that makes sense. Also in the summer, really hot weather, you can fold it out and you can just lay it over your face so you don't get covered in mosquitoes. And that's another thing, where's all the mosquitoes? Very good this year, but it's been a huge lack of insects, honestly. Even on top of this water, there's not little fish dimpling, which there normally would be. There's something wrong somewhere, boys, I'm telling you. It will be if my buzzer doesn't go off in a minute. It's almost, almost like the lake knows it's the last time I do an all-night carp run here. It would be nice to finish with a carp. They're nearly all sort of doubles here from, I suppose about, it's unusual to get one under 10. I would say they go 12s, 12s to high doubles, obviously up to 20. Quite tough getting one over 20. But there's some good mid double figure fish in here. No chainsaws, no planes. I don't think I've known berry fishing to be this quiet. No geese, no lawnmowers, no hedge trimmers, no diggers, no anglers. Except the guys talking over there on Temple. People often ask her. Uh, <coughs> Where'd you get the bivvy? I didn't get the bivvy. It's my son Mike's bivvy who bought it and used it maybe twice. I use it all the time now. He paid £50 for it, brand new at a show. They were selling them as fast as they could go. It's just called, whatever that says, Profiler bivvy. And then the only other sticker I found was this one. NGT. Yeah, that was a few years ago. You can get expensive ones, I'd imagine. Or you can look out second-hand ones. I know Finch Farm um, Fishery, they got a container there, a tackle place, and I've seen some there, I'm sure. Second hand ones, I don't know, maybe. Why would you want a new one? They're not ripped and torn. And this one's years old, and I'm still using it. Big. It's got mosquito zip things at the back. You can open that side up as well. I don't know why. I suppose in case someone comes that you don't like, and you can run out of the back. No vents at the top which obviously because the rain will come in and then the lid the lid oh yeah i'm going to put this out right it's a trail cam i put new batteries in it i'm not i'm not going to figure because it's not windy i'll maybe put it on that tree and see what comes up along that area see if there's anything walking behind me through the night so it comes down here look and this splits apart with a mesh one so you can have a mesh screen and split it apart on the zips or you can just have the clear screen. I just leave it doubled. And all I do is down here is Velcro tabs. See them? I just tab it to stop the cold air. You want it like that, and the cold air is coming in, give you a headache. And then that way I can just rip it off and get out. You can leave it rolled up. Of course, the world and his wife can come in then, you know, rats, mice, geese, chickens, dogs. Oh, all in all, good little bivvy, to be honest. Saves me buying one. Oh, I think there might be the first sort of fish or rise or something I've seen over there, unless it's a grebe. Some more set. I'll have to switch cameras later on because this is the low light one. 
Poor fish, let's have a beep. The sun's gradually dropped off. You see it's going around there. But down in here, it's dropped off in the corner there. So I sort of, we think it's a toss up between this swim on the right going, it's in the shade, or this down by the bush, which is a bit of shade, but also um, it gives them a bit of security with that bush there. Oh, here come the geese. Best thing about these geese, they're flying away, hopefully over to Temple. Best place, clear off. Leave me to have a nice quiet night, woken only by a buzzer. So bait wise, I'm just gonna give it to it, guess what, dusk. And I'll give it a little fill in with just boilies. I have got a bit more ground bait. I don't know if to use it here because I'm so tired from all the stress and work I've had lately. I thought that I won't fish tomorrow. Normally I try and do two films, an all nighter, and if I can stay awake the next day, you know, if I've had an hour, two hours sleep, I'll go on one of the other lakes and I'll make another film for you guys. But I'm just so tired, I said I'm just going to go do an all night, get up in the morning and go home. And lots of guys do that. They, they do fish through the night, <laughs> they, do, they go to work the next day. Do their wives know? Does their boss know? No, no, I can hear some of them going, no. <laughs> Good luck, that's the way to do it, fish at night at the right time. Uh, keep a catapult close by so I know it is, don't have to worry about digging it out. Um, and then you see me put these in here. Now, if the, the fish were, I was getting bites, line bites, beeps, bung, bangs, surface activity. I'd probably tie up about six of these to get me through the night, like that. So they're my, my, my bags of um, boilies that dissolve with the PVA. I just clip them on the hook, cast them out, save tying them all up two or three or four in the morning when you're absolutely drained. But you've got to keep them in a tube, and this is the old original tube that these things come in. But they're really well sealed, sealed. So I keep that, and I just pop them in like that. Can't get them out. And then they're dry. They've got to be kept dry. It's really easy when there's drizzle of rain around, and you're tying up a bag. You do it, and by the time you sort it yourself out, they all go ping, 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 and they fall out. So keep them dry. Keep them in the bivy. If I was getting more bites, I'd, I'd tie up half a dozen. But I can't be bothered. I think two's enough. Um, I'll set off a two. And I'll the same goes for PVA mesh or bags, solid bags you use them. Keep them in the dry. And where you know. I'll be interested to see if we do pick anything up on this. So quiet, it's so unusual for Berry Hill. It's normally quite noisy with geese and stuff here. Tempted to lay down, but I probably will go to sleep. As I'm sitting here, you just see the bush is right there. I mean, it's just an underhand throw there. I've never seen anybody margin fish, you know, on this lake, and now I'm just getting into it. I can't fish it. <laughs> it's just the way it is, isn't it? I think I'd settle for my normal three fish one before midnight, one through the night, and one at dawn because generally I find they switch off in the daytime. I'd like to catch one on each really, one on the left, one on the right and one in the middle. That would be a nice finish off for the session. I'll tell you what, there is a tip I can give you while I'm, I'm, I'm in here waiting like this. It's relaxing. I thought I'd give the old back a rest. When they used to fish here a lot, and they've had a big match today, I say, it was only good, but they used quite a bit of sweet corn as well. So I was told by one of the regulars here, and I'm certainly not a regular, I just do a couple of three trips a year maybe, is don't use yellow boilies, which I have done before, because you're, they said you'll get pestered by bream, because the bream are used to being fed on sweet corn, so therefore anything yellow, they're on. So I'm thinking, well that's okay, but what about when it's dark, it's pitch dark, the yellow's the same as everything else, surely. But that might be a tip if you fishing waters, other carp waters, carp guys, if you are fishing, say, a day to get water that's got a lot of carp and receives a bit of match attention and even pleasure attention, it might pay you, you know, maybe keep, if you don't want those smaller fish, keep away from yellow. I don't know, it's just an idea. It's what this guy's, a couple of guys told me that actually. Is there a black boilie out there? Has anybody ever made 
Maybe they have a black boily, I'm going to say licorice or something like that. Put it in the comments page. Does anybody know Carpy Wapies out there? Is there a black boily 18 mil licorice? Yeah, last time I was in here fishing, I had really, really best session I've ever had here. And uh, leapt out of bed. <laughs> Didn't see this huge pothole here in the dark. Went straight down there, crashed over here, nearly knocked the rods in. Nearly broke my knee, my arm, my wrist and everything. But I did get the fish. But very, very dangerous. So if you fish swims like that, just be aware in the pitch dark, you ain't seeing it. And of course, the excitement of being woken up at two or three in the morning with a screaming run, you just want to get to the rod, don't you? You don't think of what, what's in front of the next step. Make sure you're all clear. Like I'm clear on the rushes. There could be a little piece of rush stem that's going to knock that if, it got, if the wind came up during the night. And just beep, beep, beep. You know, it's just, I don't need it. So I just snap off one or two leaves that are banging into the line. Well, it's kind of hard to believe how cold it got. As soon as that sun dropped, the temperature started dropping. That's why I've got the hoodie on. I'll probably get an anorak on later on as well. I've had one take on this one under the bush, which is the one I said I thought would go off. But it was a line bite. That's where they, they're milling around. They feel the line, they bang into the line, and you get like that much. They don't hook up. I picked up nothing, didn't feel a thing. So that would have been a, a line of it. At least a fish has moved through the swim. A couple of guys up there are uh, fishing as well. So they're on an overnight, I'd imagine. So that's one in the middle. I've had a couple of single beeps on that, uh, on that middle rod out there. But again, one beep I don't really mind because it's maybe a, a leaf on the line or a feather or something like that. So, nearly time for Spag Bowl. It's almost a night time one. I think it's about 7, nearly 7.20, 7 7.30. It'll be dark fairly shortly, so I may be a bit of a, a, bit of a cook up now and I'm gonna to have to switch cameras, guys. Because the old GoPro's not great in low light. It's weird, there's nothing moving. There's no roach moving on the surface. Nothing, nothing, nothing absolutely totally unlike the trip I had before for water movement 
indications of fish. And I always go by the matchman because they definitely can catch fish. And if they've had a slow match and they were saying they're not getting many bites, it just died. So, might be a one fish deal. Oh, I've just seen some bats out as well, so that's also another good sign, I feel. Very high there. Grated cheese there. I slipped up by not bringing some bread, what I call gnawing bread, a nice cob. Now this cheese should melt, well it will melt, and sort of thicken it all up a bit. Keep it moving. Now I don't need a take now at the moment. Right, we're done. The cheese is melted. Turn this off. You can't beat it. Spag bol and cheese. You've got a little tabletop here. Hopefully, it doesn't melt it. Wow, well, sounds like it's a police helicopter. Way over in the distance there. It's been up about four or five times. Generally, find when they're coming over like that, it's a police one. Well, as they say in Australia, bon appetit. Mm. That cheese makes all the difference. So, I've got the trail cam just on the tree here. I've got some bits of boilie in my hand. I'm going to put that on. Test. Yeah, it's got me on test. I switch it to on. I've got eight seconds. I'm going to pop this here. A few boilies just down there and see what comes up out of that gap, if anything. Second one last, guys. Just pulled the hook. Oh, I've lost another one, I've got one hooked up. Double figure fish. I'll try and tune this down a bit. I just literally lost one. And I've got this one. I'm gonna get some tonic immobility in a minute, this one. Nice big fish. I'm gonna say he's around about 14, something like that. Wow. That was worth it, boys. Still don't know why I lost the other two, they just pinged off. I don't mind catching a stupid fish. I 
I just weighed him in 15 four guys. Well, let's get him back. That's weird though because uh, there's two I've lost. It's about 11 o'clock, just gone 11. And then that one I got, yeah, it was a, it was a slack line coming towards me. Actually, I thought it was a brilliant to be honest, and I got tight on it. And it turned into that 15 pluser, which was a result. But just literally funny old bites tonight, funny bites. Well, let's get the other one out. Moon's coming up, that might kill it. I'm not a great lover of seeing the moon. Whew. Man, wife of bead of dew off my forehead after getting at least one fish out of it. And I wanted one for midnight, but it's just annoying those other two I lost. One was pretty much on a line and then I lost two others, just hook pulls. Just as well, I didn't get the camera going too long because the language wasn't great. So I think I'd better tie up some more bags now. Um, I might tie three up, be exciting. Hopefully, I don't lose so many fish. It's always a job to know whether I should bait up it anymore. I don't think so. I think I'll just go through the night with what's out there. Might want to keep a bit of bait back actually rather than pump it, pump it all in the way they're feeding, you know, they're feeding a bit peculiar. I've seen the lights come on down the end, but could they way down the lake whether they're getting fish or, or just um, rigging up baiting and stuff like that. you to get these, I find, get these bags tied up and put in a, a spare tube so it's dry. Wrong tube. That's it. Hook's falling out. That's good news. That's a decent sized fish there. Uh, one. Big tail on it. 
big time. Pretty well under that bush. I was showing you about. This is a nice fish. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a beaut, isn't it? Get some in that one. Should be 16s. Let's have a look. See what we can. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, 17 and a half that one, people. No idea what time it is guys, it's gone 12 because I heard the uh, church clock going, I'm guessing, thinking that the moon's come up white, got to go right across to the west, it's quarter to one, something like that. So 15 and a 17, I'm happy. Yes, I want another one, I wanted one before 12, one through the night and one at dawn. Who touched that light? This camera's fallen over with the light so many times, it's unbelievable. I've repaired this one for this trip specially. Special treat for it. Save Mike buying a new one. Right, so I'm going to lay down. I don't suppose I'll get any sleep, but beautiful still evening. Beautiful. Classic, classic. Berry Hill Fisheries, Main Lake. Night for carp. Perfect. Bright moonlight nose in the land and nod. Oh, he's come off again. Three in a row. Three in a row. So peculiar the way they're taken, really.
Well, you'll gather by the uh, bomb site behind me. That was it. I lost another fish. Uh, I've lost three and I landed two, a 15 and a 17. So, although it's a sort of end of an era, I think the fact it's probably my, my worst night I've spent here for productivity, I still think that might be the way to go out. Is If I went out on a high, it really play on my mind that this place is uh, no longer available. And, you know, that would be hard if I caught two thirties or something like that. You go, oh my God, but at the moment, that's what it was. But I'm all packed up. You see, I've all cleared up, packed everything away, do the double journeys to the car. But I've been walking around because I've put together, cut the gear off, just put a hook on, and all I've got, I've got no bread. But about 10 o'clock, there were loads of carp, all just cruising across the top, you know, within distance. I feel sure they would have taken a floater. I rig up, I've had a walk around, they've gone. Now what's that all about? I've no idea. I've looked down here, okay, like all through these swims, off the stagings, and it's, it's sort of dead there, I don't get it. And then when I walk up here, there's an absolute demarcation line of water. I won't say clear, clearer, and then very brown. I'll take you up there, you might be able to see it, and I don't know. So I'm wondering, was I in the wrong side of that water? Should I have been in the darker water? I don't know. All I've been doing is literally, with the gears all packed up, having a look at each swim, just wandering along, looking for a cruiser. It is a beautiful lake, no question, even though it's a very, very quiet night. But just up here, by this peg, it's just a pencil line. I don't, I don't think I've seen that. And of course I've seen it when there's a tidal change at sea. I fear there's no tidal change here. I don't know whether you'll see it. If you look in the dark of the shadow line there, see if I can come out here, let me have a look. I hope these stages are okay. If you look over the back, you might be able to see. Let me just point, hang on a second. I don't want to put it down in the old DS. That, this side, is all absolutely cloudy and there's a pencil line there. So it's not like regular fish feeding, they wouldn't leave a straight line. And this side is clearer. But on this clear side, all the fish were milling around on the surface. You know, some decent carp in there. I've walked around, as soon as I put the floater on, gone. So folks, that looks like it's game over forever, forever on the main lake. For me, certainly for, uh, not for everybody, carp fishing overnight and stuff. Fabulous spot, it's been very good to a lot of people. A lot of people have had a lot of enjoyment fishing here. Traditional lakes really have fishing sort of should be really. And what I call a natural stock of carp rather than a hole in the ground and pile a load of big fat carp in. It's not the same, is it? It's not the same. I know they're big fish, but they're not the same. I wonder actually how old some of these fish are. Anybody out there know? Are they the original leany stock? What's called the leanies in here? I really don't know the history of the carp here. Anyway, let's get packed up. Uh, fingers crossed. We either find another carp lake or I go down to Bonds and knock some more out over there. Pasty bashing, we call it. Good job. 